Thank you. It's, it's my pleasure to be here today. This is a great event, and it's nice to see so many of you here so early. So I, um, I assume you're, you're anxious to hear what I say. I know that, uh, you know, as a, as a PGA golf professional, and I've been a PGA professional for, well, I started in the business, I think, like in 1978, so uh, it's a long time ago. But uh, the thing that I've always enjoyed the most about being a PGA pro is being able to share your thoughts and ideas with other pros. I remember the first time that I went to a PGA business school and I was, was there to, to learn about golf and learn about teaching and I said to myself, if I ever have an opportunity where anybody would ever want to listen to me, I'm going to try to you know, make it a point to speak as many times as I can. So it's something that I've always enjoyed. I spend a lot of my time uh, training golf professionals, especially the ones that, that work for me at, at my uh, various facilities. I mean, golf has been just absolutely incredible to me. I mean, when I think about the experiences I've had, the life experiences, the golf experiences, and really everything that's happened to me uh, that's been so great, and, and so much of it is because of golf. And, and in particular, uh, so much of it has been because of teaching golf. I mean, I started off when, uh, just as a, you know, somebody who loved the game of golf, and I, I thought when I was in college, I thought, you know what? I want to. I want to be a teacher. I want to teach golf. I want to. I want to help people. And uh, I really got inspired when I was a. Not working. Unless I can move down. We had a little malfunction. So did they hear anything so far? That's my fault. All right. I wasn't. It wasn't sounding very loud, but. I was trying my best there. Okay. The, the good news is, is if that would have worked, it would have been one of the first times ever that it worked of all these talks I've ever done. So anyway, uh, did you hear anything I said at the beginning? You want me to start over again? You guys got it? Okay. Well, anyway, I'm happy to be with you. Um, it, it's my pleasure. Anytime I get to talk about golf, you know, I, I was inspired to be a golf professional when I, when I first started. Uh, started taking lessons when I was in, in college, and, and uh, Jim Hardy was a teacher, and, and, and I saw how much he enjoyed teaching the game. I saw how much he enjoyed passing along information and seeing people do better. And honestly, I think that's the thing that really inspired me to, uh, you know, to want to be a golf instructor, to want to be a PGA golf instructor. And obviously, as a, as a, a golf instructor, you know, our, our main goal is to try to help make the game of golf better, to help grow the game. And that's something that we're all very much aware of now. I mean, you know, everyone kind of knows the numbers and the focus of the, the, the PGA and, and golf 2.0 and trying to get, you know, more people involved in the game. Um, you know, 10 years ago we had 30 million golfers. You know, now we have, have like 26 million in the, in the United States. So the, the, the number of golfers that have gone down, the number of rounds of golf have, have, have gone down every year for the last five years. It seems to have been stabilized now. And obviously we're all, we're all involved in, in the game of golf. We all like to see it grow. We see that it's growing internationally. Um, and I'm involved with that too. I mean, it, I've had a, an incredible opportunity in China. I just opened an academy at the Mission Hills facility on Henan Island in China. Um, and we, you know, have... 11 golf courses at one facility. So I know golf is definitely growing worldwide. Um, we all know that there's, there's so much interest in the game. I mean, the, the studies show that there's, there's 90 million people ha in the United States have, have played golf. And, and a lot of them, you know, got away from the game. You know, they say, they say there's like 60 million people that have gotten away from the game. But they all kind of express some interest in getting back to the game and playing. And there's another 20 million people that have said that, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to try golf. So, so the game of golf has a lot of room for growth. It has a lot of room for, for uh, you know, improvement. And, and uh, uh, you know, there, there's many different things that you can look at when you look at why, you know, golf hasn't grown as much in the last few years and why it, it, it's, it's been declining. Obviously, we have people entering the game. But we also have a lot of people leaving the game. So every year there's this turnover, and it kind of it equals out, or we're in a little bit of a decline. 
But the main thing is, is, is you have to look and you have to say, okay, what could we do better? What could we do to help make the game better? What could we do to, to grow the game? And really, when, when you break it all down, everybody kind of looks and they, they have, have three areas that they kind of they talk about with why golf hasn't grown or isn't growing in the United States. One, that obviously it's a very expensive sport. Um, and, and, and there's, you know, those are things that are kind of built into the game. I mean, it's expensive to maintain golf courses. The equipment is expensive. But then again, you know, if, if you would really look and say that, you know, we don't have to have the golf courses looking like the greatest country club in the world. If you go look and you see where, where golf started over in Scotland, sometimes their golf courses in the summer don't look too great, but people still enjoy playing them. It doesn't cost as much to maintain them, and that keeps the, the price of the game down. You know, a lot of times new golf equipment is incredibly expensive, but used golf equipment, you know, is very good too. And people, there's ways to get around the, the expense of the game. And I think one of the things, I'm a, I'm a golf court, not only am I a, a teacher, that's what I've done my whole career, but I've had the opportunity to manage and own a lot of different golf facilities. I have four teaching facilities in Dallas. I have a, a nine-hole golf course in Dallas. I have an 18-hole public golf course in Texarkana, which is in East Texas. And, uh, and I have a junior academy in Hilton Head where we have 150 kids from 31 different countries. So I'm kind of involved in all these different parts of the, the, the game of golf. But the one thing that I see is, is that as, when you look at, the, at people who manage golf, is that they need to be more innovative. They need to be more thinking outside the box. One of the ways that they can do that is to, is to fill up their golf courses. I and mean, when you look at some of the, the, the models that they use in, in, in other, you know, reservation type activities, like taking an airplane or booking a hotel or a rental car, or anything like that, a lot of times when there's space available, they reduce the price and they fill that course up. It's something that we really haven't done in golf. You know, you go to a golf course and it, it could be full or it could be empty and it costs the, the same thing to play it. And that's one of the things that, that I'm experimenting with at, at my golf course and, and I'm, I'm seeing some you know, very good results with it. I'm seeing that, you know what, we can make the game less expensive because there's, there's times when, when I'm not making any money when there's nobody out there. So, so there's things you can do with, with that part of the game. Obviously, the, the, the game of golf is, is, is not only expensive, but it's, it's incredibly hard to play. And, and that is, is, is probably the, you know, the, the thing that when you, you look at it, it's, it's the, the, the thing that I think is the, is the biggest factor that inhibits people from wanting to play the game. Now, the, the other factor, obviously, is it takes a lot of time. And we're doing things that, that try to speed the game up. I think some of the, the new initiatives where people talk about having a six-hole round of golf or a nine-hole round of golf, um, these, are all, these are all good things. And I see some alternative um, you know, ways to be involved in the game. You know, you know, when I think back, most beginners, their first introduction to the game of golf is miniature golf. You know, they, they go, a lot of people have never golfed, but they've all played miniature golf. Well, now, one of the things that I see is, is there's a lot of golfers that just go to a driving range. I see this when I go to Asia, when I go to Japan, when I go to Korea. A lot of people don't golf a lot, but they go to the range and they hit balls. I see the same thing in, in, in my hometown in Dallas, Texas. We have uh, two top golf facilities. And I don't know if you guys are aware of that, those, what those facilities do, but they, it's basically a way to play golf at a driving range. You hit the targets and you get different point values, and these places are packed. I mean, they are doing such incredible business. I mean, it has shocked me, the business that they're doing, and the amount of people that want to be involved in golf, and this is a way to do it where it doesn't take as much time. So there's certain things you can do. You know, obviously, I think that the, the PGA Tour has a responsibility to try and play faster because the pace of play is an issue. And when golfers see that how long it takes to play, well, it, you know, it, it's a detriment to them wanting to play the game. I know yesterday I was in St. Louis doing a, a, an outing, and, and one of the ladies that was helping me, she was a, actually the photographer, and she plays golf. And 
just once in a while. And the biggest comment she has is it just takes too much time for me to play. So everybody has a reason um, why they, they don't play more golf. But I think when, it, when it's all said and done, when it's all said and done, the most important reason and the biggest reason is always that the game of golf is incredibly hard. It's a hard game to play. It's a hard game to teach. And, and if you can overcome that part, if you can get people where they can hit the ball, they can enjoy the game more, they're going to want to play more. And it's just, it's just really as, as simple as that. I know that, that uh, in the last couple of years, I've been working with a friend of mine. His name's Mike Melbourne. And Mike is a, is a CEO and, and owner of Discovery Land Company. They have 16 golf courses in the United States. And Mike had 16 golf courses, but he didn't play golf. The reason he didn't play golf is because he was so bad. Now, he wasn't Charles Barkley bad, but he was just like coming right up behind Charles. It was pretty close, okay? And, and he had had lessons from every pro at every one of his 16 golf courses. And he still couldn't play golf. I mean, he couldn't hit the ball 100 yards in the air. And finally, one of his, his, his assistants asked me, he said, Hank, would you help Mike? And I said, I'll help him, but if I help him, I don't want anybody else helping him. I don't mind helping him. I'll get him, I'll get him over the hump. I'll get him playing the game. But if I start to help him, nobody else can help him. Because you know, one thing that happens with golf instruction is it tends to get too confusing. People complicate it. And when you start listening to too many people, it becomes very, very difficult. 